What's up, future respiratory therapist? Another video here coming for you from Jarek, who wants to know more about volume control variables. I did a video similar to this a couple of weeks back, maybe last week. I don't really, really remember when it was, to be honest with you. But it was called pressure control variables. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I'll put a link to it up here. I think it'll come up in the screen right here. And you can check out my video that talked about pressure control variables. This video is going to be about volume control variables and how we use them to better take care of our patients. Okay. Before I get into this topic, I want to give a shout out to all radiology technologists. Today starts, today's Monday, and it starts to start, it marks the start of Rad Tech Week. And for all of you respiratory therapists out there, you need to be telling your rad techs, your, your radiology technology, you need to let them know how much you appreciate them. They are our eyes into the inside of the body. And without chest x-rays, without CAT scans, and without things like that, then we don't know if our endotracheal tubes are in the right spots. We don't know if our PEEP settings are correct. We don't know the 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 internal imaging of the pulmonary system so they are extremely important to the medical field and i want to give all rad techs a big shout out today and say happy rad tech week enjoy all the breakfasts all the lunches all the dinners everything you get this week the pins the the fanny packs whatever you get enjoy it this is your week we had our week a couple of weeks back ago and now it's your turn. So enjoy it and you are appreciated. That's what I want to say first. Now the other thing I want to do is piggyback on top of that. And I want to say to all radiology technologist managers who are not watching this video, but I'm going to say it anyways. Figure out a way that you can instill the excitement of this one week throughout the entire 52 weeks of the year. Just like I told the respiratory therapy managers, figure out the, the, the power of this one week and figure out how to spread it out over 52 weeks of the year. And you will have happier employers, ha ha happier employees come to work more often, fewer call-ins, and a better overall positive culture of care. And that's important. Now, while I'm talking about rad text, let's talk about this. One area you guys need to get better in is capturing chest x-rays during inspiration on the mechanically ventilated patient. Now, I don't fault you because I know this is challenging. You have literally about 0.6 to 0.7 seconds to capture the inspiratory film. If you ever feel like you need help with this, call your RT. And RTs and future RTs, Go in the room and do an inspiratory hold during the film and see what happens with the quality of chest films that are produced on our mechanically ventilated patients. Look, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to guess anywhere from 6 to 8 out of 10 chest films on the mechanically intubated patients are expiratory films. Now, that's not the rad tech's fault. They're doing the best they can. They literally have half a second to maybe a little longer than half a second to capture inspiration. It's not their fault. Their machine has a one to two second lag on it, and you're trying to capture half a second. So help them. Go in there on night shift for the AM chest films. And go around with them every single room and do inspiratory holds during their chest film. Watch if the quality of the films don't improve, which will help rad tech in their outcomes and also respiratory therapy in our outcomes because we now have a better image to work off of. I get tired of trying to make decisions off of expiratory films. It's like, what do you do? What seriously, what do you do? Okay, we got bilateral infiltrates, expiratory film. Are they really bilateral infiltrates? Or is it just an expiratory film? 
doesn't doesn't help us. So, be a proponent for your rad techs. Help them make better films. And in doing so, you help yourself in making better decisions. That's my take on Rad Tech Week. Okay, happy Rad Tech Week, guys. Let's talk about volume control and the variables. So we're talking about volume control. This, this marker is done. Luckily, I have another one down here on the floor. I got markers all over the place, guys. So this is volume control. And we're talking about variables. Okay, now what we need to understand is what is set and what varies. Okay, that's where we go from this. We understand that in volume control, we have some very specific numbers that we set and then some very specific things vary from that. The first thing we set is tidal volume. We set it. It does not vary. You have got to understand that. When I'm in volume control, whether it be SIMV or assist control, the tidal volume is set. So, this setting means that our pressure will vary. And when I say pressure, I'm saying PIP, which is peak inspiratory pressure. If tidal volume is set, you're going to put in a set volume, then your peak inspiratory pressure is going to vary. Also, your plateau pressure will vary based off of the tidal volume that you set. Okay? So, tidal volume is what will vary pressure in regards to PIP and plateau. Now, the other thing we set is flow. Now, when you set flow, you will also cause a variance in your PIP. Now, how come it won't cause a variance in your plateau, Joe? So, how come when you say flow, you say it'll cause a variance in your PIP, but you didn't say it'll cause a variance in your pressures, and that's because when you do an inspiratory hold, that's how you get your plateau. You're not talking about the rate of speed through the airways. You see, when you do an inspiratory hold on a volume control breath, you get the volume in the alveoli without any air movement, which means flow does not affect plateau, but it will affect PIP. If you give a patient a higher flow, your PIP will be higher. This is assuming that the patient is not breathing in conjunction with the ventilator, but if the patient is sedated, paralyzed, whatever, and there's no inspiratory efforts happening. Increased flow, you're gonna push the air in faster, it's gonna result in a higher PIP. When you hold it, it will be the same plateau as if you were giving a lower flow. So flow does not affect plateau pressure because plateau pressure is when you take out the air moving through the airways. So flow does not affect plateau. Okay? I know that rhymes, and you can remember it like that if you want to. Flow does not affect plateau. Now, what flow does do is it sets an eye time. Now, some of you are probably working with ventilators where, I'm going to put this in the middle here. So, this isn't really, maybe you set tidal volume and you set flow or you set tidal volume and you set eye time. What you need to understand is that when you set tidal volume and you set flow, then you are fixing the eye time. The eye time becomes fixed based off of how much volume am I putting in and how fast am I putting that volume in and the result is a fixed eye time. Now, if you set eye time, let's say you're working with the servo eye, and you set eye time, then you're telling the ventilator, deliver this tidal volume over this much time, and then your flow becomes fixed. 
It doesn't matter. This always creates confusion for whatever reason, but it shouldn't. You need to understand that in volume control, you're telling the valet to deliver this much volume this fast. Whether this fast is by setting flow or this fast is by setting eye time, you're still controlling how fast that tidal volume is delivered. If you go with a shorter eye time, then you're going to have a higher flow. Go with a longer eye time, you'll have a slower flow. If you're setting flow, go with a higher flow, you'll have a lower eye time. If you go with a slower flow, you'll have a longer eye time. That works like that. It's not that eye time varies because it really doesn't. It's a fixed setting based off of tidal volume and flow. Okay? If you're setting tidal volume and eye time, then your flow becomes fixed to, to, to deliver that tidal volume at that set I time okay so don't let those two things confuse you it sounds confusing when I say it but it really shouldn't be okay because because essentially you tell an event to give doesn't matter what it is it just simply doesn't okay if you set a flow then you're setting the I time if you set the I time then you're then you're fixing the flow okay so don't let that confuse you now other than these two things you're setting a respiratory rate. Now, remember, in volume control, we have an eye time that becomes fixed, whether you're setting it or it's a product of flow. Your eye time is fixed, which means with respiratory rate, then your E time will vary based off of your patient's respiratory rate. If you're in assist control and your patient is breathing over the ventilator, then your total cycle time could become smaller. If your total cycle time becomes smaller and you're dealing with a fixed eye time, which you are, then your E time is going to vary based off of the patient's respiratory rate. Now, if you're in SIMV, this may not be as affected as much. But if you're in assist control, then there's no way this isn't affected greatly. Okay? We also set PEEP and FIO2. Now these two things have nothing to do with PIP, plateau, I time, flow, or E time. These two things do nothing but solely focus on oxygenating our patient. You have a patient with an oxygenation problem, you need to address that by increasing PEEP or increasing FIO2. If it becomes serious enough and your PIPs and your plateaus are rising, then maybe you need to switch to a pressure control mode of mechanical ventilation. But in volume control, these two, th two items will affect your oxygenation. Okay? Now, your respiratory rate and your tidal volume, these two things affect your minute ventilation. Minute ventilation is responsible for CO2 removal. Your flow in your eye time should be considered anytime you have evidence of air trapping. You should decrease your eye time. Now, if you want to decrease your eye time, you can, if you're with the servo eye, just turn your eye time down. That will increase your flow. If you're dealing with the Avia or the uh, Puritan um, PB840, then increasing your flow will decrease your eye time, which will increase your E time and reduce the amount of air trapping. Now that's all of the variables when it comes to volume control. You need to understand that your tidal volume is responsible for your pressures. You have peak inspiratory pressure, your plateau pressure. You can see evidence of this by looking at your pressure volume waveform. How do I know when this is too high? What if my tidal volume is set too high? Well, you're probably going to get a pressure waveform that looks like this. That bird beaks, right? When that bird beak is present, then your tidal volume is too high. A lot of stuff on the board here. 
a lot of arrows, a lot of circles, a lot of lines. But I hope it makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, leave me a comment. Leave me a question. I'll answer it for you. I will clarify. I promise. Okay? Send me a question in the comment section and I will address it. I'm here to help you become a better respiratory therapist. Okay? I hope this makes sense. Jarek, I hope this answers your questions for volume control variables. Things that vary when we're in the mode of volume control, whether it's SIMV or assist control. At the end of the day, guys, study hard, critically think, and have a great day.